Apparently, it's the time to buy property in Melbourne. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at another article just encouraging people to buy and spruik real estate because they seem to have been piling up recently. A common trend, maybe a concern. And this one is asking the question of whether it's a good time to buy property in Melbourne. Now, we've heard a few things recently, particularly with student accommodation, how it is starting to flood the market. I wonder why. Well, we all know why. There's a huge decline in international travel, huge decline in international students, even though the universities did everything they could to get them back over here. But is this ne does this necessarily translate to a good opportunity for people to buy? Some people in a, a previous video actually suggested waiting a bit longer to wait and see what happens to the market, where it's going. We really are in unprecedented times, guys. It's all a bit crazy, everything that's going on now. So let's have a look at this. So is it a good time to buy property in Melbourne? The illness crisis has transformed Melbourne back into a buyer's market. Now that happened really quick really quick i remember reading just a couple of days ago that people are claiming it's a vendor's market it depends on which agent you talk to it seems or who's writing the article while house hunters are regularly being thrown curveballs the most recent being an abrupt ban on physical inspections of occupied homes experts say they should still be aware of the power they have in this period of opportunity now i understand that this ban has actually been overturned now. And I'll look at that in an article later. But I mean, that's a risk that can be managed. This is the thing with this entire lockdown. Risk management is a part of every business. Every professional needs to do risk management. As the designer, I need to do risk management in design. And you can design something super safe, but it could be horrible. One issue I have, and in the NCC, the National Construction Code, on bedrooms now, you are restricted from opening a window more than 100 millimeters if there's going to be beds in it, in case children could fall out the window. Now, I understand the rationale behind it, but you want to be able to open windows to allow for ventilation. People can manage that risk. I live in a 100-year-old Queenslander with young children. Do you know what I've done to stop the children opening the windows more than 100 mils? I've gotten a nail and hammered it in to the timber windowsill so they can't open it anymore. That's apparent. I manage that risk. I guess maybe I'm just a little bit too individual. You know, I, I don't I get frustrated when some of these onerous conditions just keep, keep getting put on and on and on. It removes freedom of choice from people. So, but hotspotting founder, Terry Ryder, said, with this great power comes great responsibility. Oh, is he, is he trying to plug Spider-Man, is he? Telling buyers there was no need to prey on people in dire circumstances. Um, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Have we seen, have we seen just property prices shooting up? How, housing affordability is just insane. Wage growth, wage growth. I mean, it's non-existent. And they're asking people to not prey on oh, people in dire circumstances. It's business. People are going to, if they, if they can find a bargain, people are going to take advantage of it. You would be insane not to. I mean, am I, am I the only, am I just too cold hearted to, or have I been in business too long to realize that this, you know, people look for a bargain? Why would you even say that? It's ludicrous. Let, let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know in the comments if you know people that are, or if you're looking for a bargain, or if you'd, in the kindness of your own heart, pay, you know, extra so that the people who bought those properties and have to sell don't lose some. I mean, come on. This. Anyway, I guess it's Melbourne. You just need, it's okay, I love Melbourne, guys, just the weather's terrible. You just need to be aware in a negotiation, one party has more power than the other, he said. In these circumstances, the buyer who is able to act now has a great deal of power. 
You can buy well now and set yourself up for the growth that will come. Okay. I mean, here's the thing. People always think growth will come. Will it? Will the demand for property increase? What about all those people who bought those student apartments with that entire hectare? It's pretty much taken a hit. University of Tasmania, they're cutting the number of courses, so there won't be as much demand for that stock. Some of them, and I know I'm dwelling on this example, but I discussed it recently. Some of them, you can't even get normal people in there. So that really limits the market. Will there be growth in that sector? So these claims that growth will come, growth will come. Could it be growth through hyperinflation, perhaps? Is that real growth? What's the opportunity cost of investing in that as opposed to something else? That's probably, that's a concept. A lot of people don't even, it's, is opportunity cost common sense, guys? I, I, I tend to think it is, but I'm realizing more and more that it isn't. It's one of those things that that I expect other people to just be aware of, a polit political class to be aware of, but a lot of people don't, don't know it. Anyway, back to the article. Is now actually a good time to buy? With property prices and competition falling away, the short answer is yes, if you're one of the lucky ones who remains financially secure. Advantage Property Consulting Director Frank Valentik said buyers had been flung back into the box seat since the illness began to curb the flying Melbourne property market. Oh, so that, that market that was in decline, it was in decline at the beginning or last year and apparently shot back up and now it's going back down again, almost like a bubble or a, a dead cat bounce is retracting or falling once again. Maybe this was the pin that finally burst the property bubble. Sellers have had it good for the last 12 months, but now buyers have more opportunity, he said. Properties are selling at the bottom or middle of the price range, where a month ago they were selling up to 20% above the top end. So look at that. There you go. We're starting to see a fall in property, guys. But is now the time to jump on? Or do you want to give people maybe a couple of months on the market to get a bit, a bit worried? A bit worried or is that too heartless <laughs> everyone is that too heartless it's business you know they wouldn't you have to fight to get a discount on a property when you buy it don't you if a vendor is needing to sell you can definitely pick up a good deal melbourne house and unit values shot up 10 percent in the year to february 29 to hit a record high core logic reported but the gains gains were curbed to just 0.4 percent in march and price falls are inevitable in the months to come so okay so price falls are inevitable we're in a property deflation or the value of this property is deflating so people are going to hold on and wait to see if they can get a better deal this will be interesting to watch over the next few months everyone they're going to hold on and wait unless you know maybe you you offer them a sweet deal or go unless you want the property or you need it Mr. Ryder said those who did buy during the pandemic could do so with confidence the market would recover after it, had come, after it had come to an end. Why? Why? What's the basis of that? Is it the phenomenal Australian economy that isn't dependent on China? Is it our tourism sector, which has taken a huge hit because of this illness and the bushfires? Is it the international education? And because I, I made comments in previous videos, I put the question out there, would it be more likely if the US dollar depreciates that more of these students would head over to the US than to Australia? Because we're the poor man's, you, poor man's place to learn English, really. But then the counter question to that is, will people want to head to those countries with the huge pandemic issues they're having? Or will that leave a permanent stain on those cities? Let, let me know your thoughts on that. I haven't really thought, thought about that in any detail. There really isn't any living, living comparison we can think of. This is a one-off event. Do you think New York, do you think their reputation will take, will it take a hit or will their, you know, the quality of their institutions as an example, would that draw more people there anyway? Regardless, I think it might. He noted the Melbourne property sector had entered the illness in a solid position and history showed real estate had a track record of hanging tough in a crisis, with prices even rising during the 2008 GFC. Yes, but the GFC is completely irrelevant. What did they do in the Great Depression? You know, there's the question, guys. 
Here's the question. What do you think? I'll I'll need to look into it. I'll do a video on it. Prices will start, take some kind of a hit, but I don't think it's going to be dramatic, and I don't think it's going to be long term. He said. The hot spotting analyst did forecast a major reduction in activity, with many would be buyers ruled out by financial woes and vendors withdrawing from the market or deciding not to list at all. This means house hunters would have fewer properties to choose from, but also less competition. Buyers should also be buoyed by the fact that interest rates sit at a historic low of 0.25%. I mean, those those rates are, are just insanely low. I know we've got advertising here for you know, a nice nice place, you know. Got the, the fan outside, got a little outdoor space there, got a deck you need to maintain. These are not, not bad little townhouses, guys. You know, simple little things. Nothing too exciting. You've got a garage. Yeah. So how can I buy well in this market? Buyers should be aware of their heightened negotiating power in the illness hit market without taking advantage of vulnerable vendors. Well, okay, I, I guess. I guess you shouldn't. Well, you shouldn't take advantage of people, but you should... Uh, charity begins at home. You should take care of your family first. Industry insider, director Andrew Date, said he was finding motivated sellers were willing to cut 5 to 10% from their asking price in certain circumstances, especially to buyers offering enticing terms. For example, if you had an upsizing family who's had their home on the market four to five weeks, try making a lower offer but give them attractive terms, he said. You can say, I'll rent the property back to you for 6, 12, 18 months so you can stay living here and not have disruption to your daily lives during the illness. Or you could wait another eight weeks and offer them 20% off and the same deal. Mr. Date said would-be buyers need to be able to show agents and vendors they could act quickly by having pre-approval from a lender. Off-market opportunities were also likely to boom as many vendors viewed selling in this market as a gamble, he added. Vendors don't want to risk putting 5 to 10k up front in advertising costs and find they're unable to sell, he said. I mean, that, that's insane. How much does it cost to list on domain? A couple of grand? Get some photos taken? You know, get a 3D, 3D uh, walkthrough? What, 500 bucks? You shouldn't be paying that much for it. Buyers in the illness climate will also need to embrace technology with auctions open, uh, open for inspections and inspections of occupied properties banned by the state and federal government, agents have turned to digital platforms to showcase and sell homes. Pedros and Danielle, who didn't provide their surnames, embraced the new norms to snare a more delicate, I got that wrong, home in a virtual silent auction. We bid via SMS and phone calls and signed contracts via email, she said. The couple who were about to welcome their first child also listed their luxury four-bedroom townhouse for $1.32 million. Daniel said they weren't nervous about listing in the uncertain times. There is never a perfect time to buy or sell, as you'll always find an excuse, she said. So my advice would be to try and take advantage of the record low interest rates. So tips for buyers. If you're financially secure to buy, view this period as an opportunity and don't sit on the sidelines. They want to get you in there, guys. I want to get you in there. The FOMO is going. Be flexible in your requirements for a home to keep your options broad. Well, that's that's just advice for all the times. Pursue multiple properties to ensure you have a stronger negotiating power. Yeah, I mean, okay. Be creative when negotiating. Yep. Source off-market deals. I mean, okay, I, this advice is nothing special here. So what do you think, guys? Do you think now is the time to buy in Melbourne? It's definitely... Well, Melbourne, well, all, all of the sectors, but Melbourne in particular, will be one to follow, to see, you know, just remember, don't take advantage of those poor vendors. What do you reckon, guys? Do you think people will? Or do you think we'll see greater falls? Remember, apparently property always goes up. Like, share and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you're a fan of the channel, you can support us via Patreon or YouTube. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay for your consumer purchases or our referral links at Independent Reserve or KuCoin for the crypto traders out there. We have merch from Heiser Says or Teesprings. You can sell us or send us gold from 
using Gold Pass from Perth Mint, and you can donate via PayPal. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you later. Bye for now.